serious. Derry, can you hear us? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so you want me to say something? No, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> well, the trouble is, Marco, don't ask me to say something. You know, I won't stop. <laughs> but, but I agree with everything that Heim said. What, what, what happened yesterday was most unfortunate. <clears throat> and uh, I, it, it would be almost impossible that it didn't do a little bit of harm, even though all the rest of us gave her big hugs and did our best to reassure her. It was still very unpleasant, and we must make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, and for the lady, I think it was uh, really, really unpleasant. I yes. felt really sorry that it happened with us. Yeah. Yeah? Me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So shall we start uh, the talk? I will just introduce Marco, and then we can start. And uh, just to lay out about, the yester about yesterday's problem, uh, we, have, uh, we are all prepared here uh, to immediately introduce waiting room as soon as the problem arises. We have few people here just watching everything. And uh, if, if there is an interruption for, let's say, a few seconds, you, uh, I'm going to give Marco the host uh, access so you can also immediately take action. Marco, okay? Thank you. So I will introduce Marco. Marco is our dear friend uh, whom we see every, in every IDEC and UDEC. So Marco is computer scientist, founder of the Phoenix School, the first democratic school and the first online school in Finland. It is based on an autonomous homeschool system with a knowledge constructors learning environment designed specially for the school. It is a school-centered system of active learning, socialization, peer learning, and information retrieval that allows the complete primary school cycle to be completed from start to finish. Marco Koskinen created the student-centered software. They are thus completely autonomous in their learning. In Finland, a pupil has completed primary school when he or she has completed all the compulsory subjects in all the required components and topics. By law, a pupil must attend school for 10 years after starting primary school. But there is nothing to prevent, nothing to prevent the pupil from completing primary school more quickly. And completing primary school, the pupil is no longer in school. He has made a significant contribution to building the UDEC community. And he has been working on other projects, various other projects, a lot of projects like Panka Academy, Mary Pension, uh, Divine Hope School, and Climate Action Year. So he is all in one package. In addition to education, his interests are related to emotional well being, peer support, computer games, and youth rights. So today he is amongst us to give a talk on the purpose of democratic education. What he writes and what he conveys in this talk is democratic education has been around for quite a while. It is still a very marginalized form of education and available mostly to a very few already privileged children. For those few children, it gives a great basis for their lives. But what is our goal outside the small community? How can democratic education be a force for change in the wide world? How can we respond to the new challenges the world is facing? That's going to be his talk for this evening. Let's welcome him. Thank you very much, Mark. Now you can start. Thank you very much. And uh, I will say in the beginning, beginning that it, this will not be a talk. Uh, as many of you know, I'm not a fan of long talks, so it will be a workshop. Um, and I hope that's fine for, for everyone. And it's really nice to have so many familiar faces, Hi, Sophia. <laughs> uh, and uh, so uh, I'm going to give you the address of the Google Doc that outlines the schedule. So you can see for yourself what's the plan. Mm. 
So that's the link to the uh, session document. And the plan is to basically divide this session into blocks of 15 minutes. Uh, I will, uh, we will do a small round of introductions first. Uh, and uh, I think because we are so many, we'll see how that's gonna be in practice. Uh, and uh, then uh, we're going to have uh, have my speech, a kind of introductory speech for this topic, so you get my idea what I'm what I have in mind. But I think 15 minutes is enough for that. And then uh, then we're going to divide into breakout group, groups. Oh no, no, actually we're going to first discuss about uh, the challenges the world is facing at the moment, or as our civilization is facing at the moment. And pick three main challenges, and then go to the breakout groups so that uh, each group then can think about this particular challenge and how it affects us and how can democratic education be a force to uh, solve this challenge. And then we're gonna come, come back together and uh, do a quick summary what everybody thought about these topics. And then we do it, do it again with another round so that everybody has, has a possibility to discuss about two different topics or two different challenges out of the three. And then we come back together and summarize and do a small uh, like a closing circle. So how does this sound? Uh, is everyone okay with this plan? Great. Uh, did ever, anybody have a problem opening the document? Yes, Marco, how do we get the document? Is it in chat or? Yeah, it's, it's on the chat, yeah. Okay. Actually, Marco, you sent it to me privately. Oh, yeah. I just realized, yeah. <laughs> I have reposted it to everyone. Yeah. So Perfect. It's from Thank me. you very much. Yeah, I wondered why it was coming from Liz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. Hi, Liz. Uh, yeah, that's the technology. Cool. So, um, um, I'm just wondering how can we fit everybody's quick introduction into 15 minutes? I don't think that's possible, but uh, maybe we'll do it anyway. Uh, so just quickly say your name, where you come from. Uh, and I think uh, maybe a quick uh, word about what's your understanding of democratic education or uh, do you have any, any background knowledge of democratic education? So I get an overview of where you come from. Ian, do you want to start? I go, I'm Shashi from Delhi, India. Okay. And uh, I am from the field of education of, of once earlier, other side, and then coming from the teaching part of it. So education is my area. Yeah. And recently we are really bringing up, um, uh, we have taken up initiative how to really upgrade the skills of school owners to really make them aware of right kind of education and giving them a lot of uh, skills which are required, the way you just talked about the democratic education. They don't know even about education, forget about democracy. So, yeah. so that's a quite challenging thing, but we are very high hopeful the kind of resource person we have, like you and others since uh, 23rd I'm attending. So I really feel that you know, oh, yeah. right Bunch of people. <laughs> right bunch of people who will support us with this vision of ours. Thank yeah. you, Mark. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, let's try to keep it a maximum 20 seconds the introduction. So, <laughs> uh, so Ian, do you want to go next? Can you unmute yourself? 
I'm Chaim. Uh, I'm, yeah, somebody else will speak, you know. Yeah, so and it, maybe it makes sense if I can, if I, if I will say who. Of course. Okay, sorry. We don't try. Have to guess. So Ian. Yeah, um, I'm Ian Cunningham. I'm from England um, on the south coast. Um, my sense of democratic education is that it's not about repeating what happens at the national level under the current political systems, but with, that we have to think differently about democracy. Cool. Thanks. Bruno? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you again. Uh, I'm Bruno. I'm from Spain, but I'm living in Finland. I'm studying here my master's on classroom teacher education. And democratic education has appeared to me as a great alternative to what we understand as education as a uh, traditional thing, so a way of changing the world, basically. So cool. Nice to see you here. Great to have you here. Uh, Fiona? Um, I see democratic education as engaging and recognizing students as today's problem solvers and leaders, that they should be engaged with problems of climate change, health, uh, economic justice, and recognize them as knowers already. Perfect. Uh, Ram? It's Ram, Ram? Maybe not. Karen? Hi, hello, namaste everyone. Uh, it's oh, me, Singha okay. Goyala from Nepal. Hello. And uh, uh, we are uh, also uh, the practicing about democratic uh, democracy in education uh, and especially we empower uh, students uh, like choices their interest and their voices what uh, whatever um, they are uh, like uh, bringing a type of certain desire or qualities uh, within them and we are uh, providing uh, quite uh, educational environment uh, to make them uh, to be out uh, with certain like uh, abilities uh, with their free choices. And this is, we promote uh, especially the quality like uh, what uh, they especially need according to their interest, ability uh, and position. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Karen? Uh, from Brazil? <laughs> Can you un unmute yourself? And try if you can unmute yourself. Uh, Okay. Now, yeah. <laughs> I'm from Brazil. Uh, I don't have much experience in democratic education, but uh, from what I see in conferences, it's about bringing life into schools. Yeah, that's a good summary. Chaim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm Chaim, I'm from London. I. Uh... Uh, studied uh, in the old days, it was called open education. And uh, today I'm involved uh, with education in India in Tamil Nadu in Ishavidya schools, where we are uh, uh, trying with, uh, there is advice to turn about 20% of the curriculum to be democratic. So the students are studying from their own subject by the choice, whatever they like to. And uh, we try to, to introduce different subjects to them just uh, to enhance their interest. And uh, that's it, 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And Eric? Are you muted? Fortunately, you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Derry Hannum from, uh, from the south of England, a few kilometres along the coast from Ian. For me, um, democratic education is about self-directed learning in a context of a democratic and human rights respecting school community. Eight seconds. 
Cool. That's, <laughs> that's record. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, very, so, yeah. very pleased to hear what Haim said. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Sophia? Hi, everyone. I am Sophia. I'm from Germany. And for me, democratic education is about respect for each other and participation for everyone. Cool. Uh, Evangelos? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I'm from Greece. I'm a part of uh, the community, uh, the Greek community of UTEC. And uh, we're trying hard to let some uh, for the good practice of democratic education in the public school system. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Burçak? Hi, everyone. It's Burçak from Turkey. I'm teacher trainer and a professor at the university. My understanding of a democratic education is about trusting the kids because I believe kids know better to be democratic, to respect human rights, living things right, anything. So we have a lot, but deep inside down, there are issues, if only. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Putzak. Uh, Liz? Liz Campbell from Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, I believe democratic education is about authentic learning that contributes to the flourishing of the individual and humanity as a whole. I taught high school for 20 years. I have a PhD in educational sustainability. I now teach teachers and I use a living theory approach to uh, allow students to create their own learning. Perfect, beautiful. Uh, Yorgos. Hello. Uh, I'm Yorgos Kyrgyzis from Greece, old programmer, member of EU Deck Greece, and also participating to a social enterprise for open source software that includes ed education. First time participating in a Zoom meeting here. I'm watching many others from Facebook. Hello, all. Hello. Uh, I think uh, uh, we need to stop the introduction round here. Because it, otherwise, otherwise it's going to take the whole event. Uh, we can continue, or you can continue the introductions in the breakout groups. So I think it makes more sense. I, I'm really sorry for this because I, I really, really want everybody to have their say in this. But uh, hopefully you can say it in the breakout groups. So um, uh, I'll give a quick introduction on the idea. What I'm what I'm planning to do, um, and uh, or, or what's the idea of this this topic in general? Why why it's important for me? Uh, so first of all, I, I think most of you are quite familiar with democratic education, uh, but I, I'll give a quick uh, definition. What I what I see democratic education what it means for me. So. Um, Basically, I got interested in democratic education through Summerhill. I uh, ran into the book in the library and read it, and it just transformed my worldview quite completely, especially towards education. Uh, and what, what shocked me was the thing that if, if there's a possibility, even a slight possibility, uh, that if uh, students are given a choice to uh, choose their own studies and study in their own way, then why on earth do we have to have this kind of uh, mandatory compulsory system where everything is uh, pre-dictated what they have to do? So um, so I just I start, started to research on it and uh, I've been on that road for 25 years now and it's been a beautiful road. <laughs> never regret it, my, uh, my choice. And uh, the key aspects of uh, democratic education for me, uh, many times democratic education is compared to uh, different kinds of alternative education pedagogies. 
pedagogies and uh, like Montessori or Steiner or such. But the key difference is that uh, democratic education isn't actually uh, a method uh, as, as a method of uh, teaching or studying. It's a way of uh, forming the government of the, of the school. And uh, that gives the freedom to, for the democratic school to use any kind of, kind of methods. They can use Montessori tools, they can use Steiner's tools or whatever they choose. Uh, uh, but still be a democratic school. Uh, and that this also makes possible for any school, regardless of their kind of philosophical background, to become a, a democratic school. So uh, being a democratic school isn't, uh, isn't exclusive or inclusive. It's, it's, a, it's a way of forming the structure of the school. So, um, the, the other thing is the kind of youth liberation. Uh, I think uh, young people as a group of people is uh, highly oppressed in our societies. Uh, even in the Western like uh, uh, or Nordic countries or whatever countries, uh, young people are still being heavily oppressed because they are told what to do. Uh, they are not trusted. They are uh, not given the option to kind of build their own life the way they choose, but they are given a quite quite rigid uh, path to follow. And of course, there's it's going better and better, but this, the pace of uh, change is very very slow. Uh, then I, I would say I want to say a few words about. Uh, how I see democratic education as part of our democratic societies. Uh, another thing that really shocked me about Summerhill was the, the fact that it was governed in a democratic way. And that kind of raised me the question that if we really want to have a democratic society, then how on earth are, are we supposed to have it by having a totally autocratic or authoritarian education system. Uh, so it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and then there's the uh, idea of democratic education being a counterforce for capitalism or consumerism. Um, of course, we our societies are not truly democratic. Uh, we live mainly in a, in a uh, capitalistic society. Uh, with globalization and everything. And uh, uh, the main thing, or one of the main things in capitalism uh, is that in order it to survive, it has to make uh, people somehow suffer. Uh, if people didn't suffer, they wouldn't be dependent on, on other people's resources or, or, or the owning class in, in, in a way that they are now. Um, and democratic education has a, has a uh, kind of potential of breaking this pattern because uh, uh, it makes young people think for themselves. And if people think for themselves, they cannot be really ruled over or uh, uh, imposed some artificial things by the capitalistic system. And also they cannot be treated as consumers, but they have to be treated as human beings. And that's a big difference that a democratic education can make. Um, so uh, the democratic education can teach uh, responsibility. And when people start taking individual responsibility, uh, they, they will see that this kind of capitalist, capitalistic society just doesn't serve people the way it's supposed to serve. Uh, and uh, many times capitalism is considered to be a kind of flagship for freedom and individu individualism. Uh, but, but actually many times it prevents people's freedom by cutting them off from resources. So, uh, 
it's, it's not an easy question or a simple question uh, how, how to, what are the freedoms that should exist and uh, what are the kind of uh, uh, economic freedoms that should exist. But there's something definitely that needs to be changed. Uh, for example, I've calculated that about 90% of all the work that people do is completely and utterly unnecessary. Uh, so if we cut down 90% of the work that we do and put that energy in something really useful and meaningful the, for the human kind, uh, there would be a huge difference in the world. Um, and basically, finally, I, I want to just say that the education system should stop wasting young people's time and life. Because uh, in, in some countries like, like Japan and South Korea, for example, the school takes practically all of the life of young people. So they don't have anything outside the school, basically, or very, very, very little. So, um, and, and the argumentation for that is very shallow. Because if, if we look at the learning and the quality of learning, the key element for learning to be successful is to have inner motivation in it, in the content of the learning. And uh, in Finland, there was a research about the motivation in the schools. And the, the, found, the end result was that they didn't find any content motivation from the, in, in the children. So all the motivation for learning was uh, uh, kind of external motivation. Uh, to me, that's very, very concerning and uh, uh, just shows how much time is wasted in school. One more example about the efficient of efficiency of learning. Uh, this comes from the Sudbury model and the Sudbury Valley School, uh, where they, they usually teach mathematics in a way that uh, they have a group of students and uh, they start teaching them mathematics uh, like twice a week or so. But because, of, because the students are uh, intrinsically motivated, they've asked to be taught mathematics or uh, to study mathematics. They learn all of the compulsory mathematics that is usually taught for nine years just in half a year with only two lessons per week. And if you calculate how much time is wasted in the regular school for the uh, not even the same, but less or worse results, we end up with more than a thousand hours of wasted time for the young people. And this is just one subject. So, um, so, in democratic education, we don't need to waste young people's time. Um, and then uh, for the topic of uh, how, how democratic education can change the world or, or help solve global challenges, I just uh, take a quick uh, example of, um, of the uh, projects I am planning to start called the Panga Academy. Uh, the idea of the Panga Academy is to offer young people a place, a boarding school, where they can fully focus on solving global challenges. So we wouldn't have any, any imposed or imposed uh, curriculum, but we would just discuss together with the students what are the issues that they want to work on and uh, find solutions to. Uh, and then start working on them. And this would be a one year program for each student and they can just uh, kind of learn, uh, exchange year for one year and uh, get an idea of what it means to actually put your mind into something meaningful. Uh, there was a nice exa example of a 14 year old who cracked, cracked the uh, coronavirus uh, and uh, came up with a nice solution for it. 
which is actually globally recognized. So it just shows that uh, young people shouldn't be undermined and their thinking shouldn't be undermined. And there should be given a platform where to actually, actually take part in the solving of global challenges. All right, this is my, my contribution contribution to the uh, topic. And, uh, and now we can start putting out some ideas what we want to, well, or what we consider to be the main challenges uh, that democratic education could actually have an influence in. So the platform is free. Uh, I encourage you to uh, actually, because I cannot see everyone at the same time, um, but we have so many people here. So maybe you still can just raise your hand uh, in the, how, how do you do it in the Zoom? I don't remember anymore. Um, you go to reactions and raise your hand like this, and you do like this. Yeah. Reactions on the bottom right. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Did everyone find it? So if you just raise your hand from a reactions uh, and uh, I can call your name. So uh, anyone want to give an idea what, what, what would be the biggest challenges? Uh, Heim? I'm not sure if it's the biggest challenges, but what I see now, I do a lot with uh, people or uh, uh, because of AI changes the way of the workplace. And I can see that many people, they might have work, but they have a lot of free time. And I think part of the way you ed children, if the people are educated freely and they, have, they can use, they can uh, be the monitor their time as they, as they want it and uh, they learn how to use the free time, what to do with the time. And I think it's uh, one of the future challenges will be for many people that they have a, and so this should be part of the, of understanding how school should be and how the time should be. I don't know if you call it school or what, I don't know if it's the right word to use, but uh, maybe not politically correct anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I summarized it uh, like how to learn to use the free time productively. Would that be okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, anyone else? So I'm just putting out some ideas that I've, I've had in my mind. Uh, of course, the climate change has, has been uh, coming and going in the, in the news for a few time or for some time already. Um, uh, and of course, this coronavirus, probably one very interesting challenge, uh, not for those who lost their lives for it. But uh, anyhow, it's something to think about. Um, uh, Thomas from Sudbury. Hello, everybody. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. And long ago, I was a staff person at a Sudbury school in California for about four months. And what a highlight of life to see what the young people are capable of when they're given space to be bigger according to their own choice of how much, how big they want to be. So the challenge that I'm aware of and can share is that our world is based on fear. People are trained to live their life according to what they uh, want to prepare themselves out of their fears. Is that my feedback? Uh, oh, it doesn't sound like it. No. Uh, so the challenge is how to... Uh, overcome that fear. Parents are all trained up in the mass oriented schooling. They think not only is that the only way, but it's the best possible way, right? And they're afraid if they don't charge ahead with their children, uh, they're going to fall behind. So everything is based on fear. So it's a kind of a vicious loop on how to help people overcome their own fears. And uh, the examples, I think is going to be the only way to do it, to see how happy and how productive people can be when they're able to make their own choices. Thanks. Yeah, cool. 
let's throw it down how to help people overcome their fears. Marco, can I say something? Sure, go ahead, Fiona. I think when you said challenges, there's two interpretations of that. One is what are the challenges in democratic education in, in right. moving it forward? The other is what are the challenges that students could take on, like climate right. change, right. health? So yeah. I, I think, I don't know how you, how you wanted us to respond to that. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I wasn't very clear on that. So my original idea was to uh, think about a few global challenges that are not education related necessarily. Uh, but which our civilization is facing. Uh, and then to think about ways how democratic education can be a force in solving those challenges. Uh, Burchak? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, my name is Bridget McGinn. I'm from New York City. Um, and I think that a lot of uh, major cities and youth in major cities are in the streets protesting. Uh, so, you know, racism and politics and, uh, you know, regimes and everything that is happening around the globe. I think that um, the chaos of that has, it has given us a rich moment now if it, uh, to take some action to... Uh, to support the learning because you know they're getting some serious experience right now so um and it, i don't know about everywhere else but in my city they're leading things they're very creative and innovative and and forming all sorts of bike pods in different ways of addressing protests they're getting arrested they many were arrested last night um so you know they're and they're being remotely schooled they're high schoolers they're young people uh, so I, I think that that's a very um, potent challenge right now. Yeah. So how should I uh, uh, put it in one, one sentence or? Uh, mm. You want one sentence? Racism, a, a political oppression, and youth activism. To make change. Yeah. 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 We can we can think about those. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Then there's uh, Bruno. Hi. Well, current democracy, I would say, because I have the feeling that we are living on a moment that the democracy as it has been sold to us, it's not maybe the way to fix anything. And and I think we are really stuck on that paradigm of what democracy is. So I think that requires a rethink and re, I don't know, rethink about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, then, yeah. Yep, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that the, the biggest issue is, is about climate change and about the destruction of our environment and therefore people and people's lives. Um, and the impact of that is just because it's global. The For me, uh, what normal schooling does is to teach people not to think ecologically, to, to divide the world up into subjects as though they can be thought about separately, uh, which to me is bizarre. Um, like why separate, and with our curriculum, we separate history and geography, but every, every if, you, if you're learning geography, you're always learning about the past because that's what you learn about in geography. And in history, you everything's gonna happen in a place. So you're learning geography. It, it's, it's bizarre to separate subjects. Um, and I think that um, because school's hidden curriculum is to make people unsystemic and anti-ecological and that, that is we won't solve the ecological crisis unless we destroy that subject orientation within traditional schooling. Yeah. Cool. Ha, ha. Yeah. Go ahead, how do we get recognized? <laughs> do you mean um, 
Okay, sweet. Um, should we be raising my hand? I don't know how to. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I think that when we uh, engage students in, in studying the big dilemmas, questions of the world around the big questions in various areas, they naturally come across mathematical issues. They, they, they learn mathematics in, in trying to plot how COVID is spreading. They know how to display that data. They know the history of diseases. They know artistically what Corona looks like and how to show it. So I think that, you know, uh, if we engage them in this phenomena, for lack of a better word, or relevant authentic questions, as my friend Liz says, the students come to have to know those skills. They need to know the mathematics modeling of it. They want to do computer generated models to see what it could look like. And I think that's how it's transformative. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, yeah, right. Uh, so we have two more hands. Let's take those and then choose a couple of challenges and break out, go to the breakout rooms. So, uh, uh, Sharon? Uh, so, thank you, that's me. Unfortunately, my camera is not functioning. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, I'm Yana Clemens in South Africa. I also co-founder um, co of a Sudbury inspired facility. Um, I loved what everybody's been saying and, you know, just what Ian was saying about the subjects, divisions and things like that. I think that the biggest crisis we've got right now is education, because as everybody's saying, if we can change our education, we're going to change the way that young people are engaging with all of the other problems. So I actually think education is the biggest and the hottest issue. And I find it quite ironic how much youth effort is going into tackling other problems and not education itself. And I would really love to see us first of all, um, you know, sort of make young people aware. I mean, I know dairy has been chatting to the climate kids in, in the UK who were, had never even heard of self-directed education. And there's all these highly motivated young people working on climate, which is fantastic. I don't want them to stop, not for one minute. But what about education itself? Um, and I think that that's where democratic education really has the biggest power punch, because I think once there's a critical mass of teenagers who know that it's possible to self-direct your education, we're going to see an incredible revolution um, of empowerment. And that's exactly where, in my experience, that's where the kids learn that they can impact other things, is when they first learn that they can impact things directly in their own lives through a participatory empowerment in their own a learning space that's when they actually learn that this is possible and can take it out to everything else they experience in the world thank you cool thanks a lot uh so we have uh, uh Jorgos and then uh, i will give uh Kavika one more word uh and uh, i encourage you to uh, don't 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 raise your hand anymore because i think uh, we don't have time to take more uh more uh, speeches or opinions anymore, but Yorgos? Okay. I, I will say that a global uh, collaboration, uh, like commoning, in all of the challenges that uh, pre-discussed, how can we uh, achieve a collaboration globally to, to do this? Yeah. yeah. And Kavika? Hey, so I am a student at ISH. And so I think one of the biggest challenges in democratic education would be to make it to get heard because it needs to be um, get heard so like everybody knows there's such a system because many people don't know that. So therefore they can't really get a democratic education without knowing what it is. Therefore, one of the biggest issues will making it to get heard. That's what I think. Cool. Thanks a lot, Kavika. Uh, Monica? Hi, I'm... Sorry. Um... I think the biggest challenge are 
um, adults. Like yeah. even myself, I believe in democratic education, but I feel like um, my kids don't have the same uh, say at home as I do. I'm more of a dictator at home. And that's what I think is the biggest challenge. It starts from home, I think, that children learn that they have power or that they don't have power to affect their lives. Yeah. Uh, we still have a few. Uh, OK, let's take the still. Uh, two hands raised. Three um, us. Uh, Kumar. Hi, hi everybody. Oh. Uh, Srinivas Kumar Rapotu. And uh, my point is, I think we need to understand the larger interfacing between the society and the individual. And out in the society, I see this problem of real attitude versus power politics. Not everything is rosy about democracy. We can always manipulate democracy as it looks, right? So therefore, the very big question is about the real attitude to solve problems versus the power politics. And how does power politics really come into play in solving problems of people? That is the primary problem out in the society. Now on the other side, you teach ideals of goodness, values, morals, and uh, highest values of democratic principles to the children. When they come out into the society, there is there is some element of chaos and confusion to balance out. So the balance, the right understanding between the ideals of democracy that we can teach to the children versus the practical reality out in the society. We need to minimize that gap. And to affect this, my strong point is more and more global connect of the good people and the so-called good people has to happen. Why? Because my big contention is good work is happening in isolated pockets. And this has to be combined and the volume of the good work has to be increased on a global plane. And in that connection, IDEC like organizations and other, other mediums have to really interface. And we are also ready from our sky transformations. Let us all connect on the global, pla global plane so that our numbers are really rising up so that whatever we are talking about democracy at the individual level is really better translated at the bigger social platform. This is my thought. Thank you one and all. Thanks a lot. And let's take one more and then I, I, I'm trying to combine these uh, ideas together into three main topics. Meanwhile, uh, Mohammed. Yes, please. Uh, this is Muhammad Kavit from Bangladesh. Marco, uh, really, very happy to see you here. Uh, as I saw you in Finland. Yeah. After that, uh, I'm sorry I didn't join any program. Okay, the challenge uh, for democratic education in my country is as the education is looked after or governed by the government. So, uh, as uh, Honorable Srinivas said, so. Uh, uh, democratic uh, is a is a right to all, especially the less privileged, as my view. But the power, the the what should I say, the muscles one always try to control that one. So in my country, whenever we try to introduce democratic education, we are always facing problem. Hopefully, we'll overcome that one. Thank you. Thanks, lots. So uh, I'm trying to uh, gather three main topics. 
um, um, so I'm, I'm coming with uh, three topics, which would be global issues like climate change or coronavirus. Uh, one would be community building, uh, including collaboration or racism, uh, like which, what, what things are blocking for us to be a one humanity. Uh, maybe one humanity would be a nice topic and title for it. Um, and then um, let's put home and education in one block. And uh, uh, so it would include uh, everything related to education and uh, home situation and learning at home. Would that make sense? So three topics would be uh, global issues. So how can, how can democratic education help solve global challenges like climate change or coronavirus? Uh, then the uh, second topic would be one humanity. So how, how can democratic education uh, make people come together and realize the oneness in us? And the third one would be home and education. So how, how can young people uh, be given a voice and how can we uh, spread the information about democratic education, ed education and gradually change education itself? Would that be good? Yeah. All right, so now I need help for the uh, breakout groups. So uh, can, you, can you create three breakout groups and people can choose uh, choose them for themselves which one they want to join. Uh, so the first one would be titled Global Issues. Uh, second one would be One Humanity. And the third one would be Home and Education. Do we have our administration with us? Yes, Marco. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to do it here. Okay. Just... Great. <clears throat> and uh, actually before we go, um uh, I've I've created documents so you can share. Um uh, let's uh, I'll just make the topics here for the for the documents. Breakout room. Yes, Marco. Yeah. As a host, I think you can do it from there. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll just prepare these documents for us. And go. So the first would be. So this here, check one. So that's the first document about uh, global uh, global issues. So anyone who wants to pick that topic, please uh, open that document, uh, and I will soon open the breakout rooms. Then the One Humanity um, document. That's One Humanity. And then the third one would be Home and Education.
And then the breakout rooms, let's see how I can make that happen. Um, V rooms, manually. This, this can be a mess. Let's see how it happens. <laughs> uh, I'm choosing manually to uh, divide people into rooms. So may I say something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, if it, it it will be easy if we rename uh, which room we wanted to go, it will be easy for Marco to take us in the breakout room. One, two, three subject numbering. If we put front of our name, then it will be easy to Marco to move us in breakout room. Am I communicating? Clearly. I, um, I'm not sure. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm renaming the the breakout rooms. If you based look on at these. my profile, if you look at my name now, you'll see what she means. If everybody does this, what Berchak's just done, and what I've just done, then it'll be very easy. Uh, where is it? Let's see. Can you see my name, Marco, under the picture? In the chat. No, no, not in the chat. But my picture and my name right below in the gallery view. The idea is to rename ourselves to start with the number of the top. Oh, all right, all right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. I have also renamed myself the topic yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah, please do that. So you can so rename. You can, yeah. Yeah. Marco, I want to be in topic three. Yeah. So topic three, three is uh, home and education. Yeah. Yeah. And topic number two is uh, one humanity and topic number one is global issues. So please uh, rename yourself uh, with a leading number one or two or three. And I will assign you. Mm. I'm sorry, I don't understand how to rename myself on this thing. Uh, I don't see where it is. Yeah, go to the participant, click on the participant button. You see okay. your name. If you see there is an option, mute and more, click more. Okay. Uh, There's no then... more, I only have mute and raise hand. An easier way is to just right click on your own frame and you'll have the rename option there. Okay. Yeah. On the video frame? Yes. Right click on your video frame for rename. There are three dots over there. Yeah. Three dots. Right click on the three dots. It only says disable video receiving. I'm right click anywhere on your video frame and you'll these uh, right click will give you a, a sub menu which includes rename. Uh, that depend on the. It's on your personal photograph version. frame. Yeah. But if you go through Maybe participant just list, the option. Assign us. In all, in oh, all here I found it. Participant list, you click on the participant list name. If you click on your own name on the participant list, you can rename it. Sarah. If you right click, if you right click on your participant name in the participant list, then it allows you to do this. Yeah, it seems there's several ways of doing it. Uh, uh, I'll just uh, divide everyone who has already set their name and uh, we'll continue with the ones who haven't, and uh, I'll try to let them join you.
to be sending uh, secret sending everyone. Uh, I tried Terry sending you to the room number three. For some reason, it's not going yet. It's very difficult to send me anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is. I uh, find it very difficult too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. People are asking my help in the room number one. I'll, I'll go there quickly and join return here right after. Uh, I'll try to invite you there, certain Derry. Okay, Marco has left us. He will be back. He's going to help in the other room. Marco, we can't hear you. OK, now? Yeah. Uh, Gary, uh, it says that you should be going to the room number three, but maybe you need to click on something to accept or approve. Can you see anything clickable? Uh, Derry, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah. But I don't appear to be uh, in room number okay. three. Uh, let's try to. Oh. I'll try to move you to room number one. Anything changed there? Sorry, you're moving me to room number one. Yeah. Does it say oh. anything? Why? Uh, just trying to move you somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Try outer space. I'll try home and education once again. How about now? Is I can there... see Jerry and his table tennis table. <laughs> He's going to start firing table tennis balls at this all if we're not careful. Yeah. He's got a machine, you know, like a machine gun. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have the uh, the IDEC shirt from 2016? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about having it. <laughs> I think I've got one. <laughs> Which year? I can't see oh. the year, Jerry. Sit up a bit. Oh, 16. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got that one. That's the Finland one. Yeah, I have some of those. <laughs> Uh, but we still have the problem of not getting their dairy to the correct room. There was some guy there who gave the worst keynote talk ever given at any conference anywhere. <laughs> Somebody Hannum or something, I remember. Uh, dairy, do, do you want to kind of uh, leave and join again? Let's see if, if I can move to you to the correct room afterwards. Sorry, what do I have to do? Uh, try try leaving and then rejoining. What, leaving the whole thing? Yeah. Push leave, okay, bye. Let's try. 
And now do I push leave meeting as well? Yeah. Really? That takes me right out of everything, doesn't it? To do it, you have the link, yeah. Marco, what are you doing? Breaking people up into, into groups for discussion? Or yeah, what? yeah. Just for yeah, some, we have three. For some reason, I think we didn't have that function for a while. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you put me into room number one? Uh, who? Srinivasanji, Srinivas Srinivas heaven. Heaven wants to be in room oh, number heaven. one. Heaven. Yeah, sure. You've got Derry back, uh, Marco. Yeah. Uh, let's see if this okay. works. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Derry. Let's see. Uh, we can't hear you, Derry. Can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah. All right. So, Derry, uh, I will now try to assign you to the room number three. Uh, see if something happens there. Ah. It was really quite cold outside. It was raining, so I can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I've got a little box. Join yeah. breakout room. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hi, I'm sorry. I also am not assigned to the room I need. Okay. Uh, I'm Angela. Let's see. I'm Angela. Yeah, for some reason I'm, I'm not seeing you here. My last name starts with U, which should be on the bottom if it's alphabetical. Right. That's, that's uh, Send somewhere else. No. Oh, interesting. Uh, should I also do like dairy and go out and come back? Uh, please try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. How many groups do you have? Three. It, it was a bit of a challenge to pick three, uh, like a global challenges to discuss about. <laughs> uh, we picked uh, like uh, global issues like uh, climate change and uh, uh, coronavirus, one topic. Then one humanity, like uh, bringing people together as one topic and then home and education as one topic. I was, I was confused about your talk because I before I went to sleep last night, it said you were just about to talk. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's, it's relative. <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm back. All right, cool. Do I see? I want group three. Yeah. Jerry, that was an early reminder. Just to let you know that you, you don't miss his lecture. <laughs> Very early, yeah. <laughs> uh, can someone else see see Angela on the on the participant list? I think she's she is there. Angela Uching. Yes. For some reason, you're not showing on the list. Let's see. I'll close the list and try again. Uh, no. It's different. It was three Angela. Now it's Angela. Yeah, it just changed, but I don't see Angela at all there. Really. No. This is interesting. Do I need to turn on my camera to make it work? No, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's just that you should be in the unassigned list, but you don't show up here. I'm invisible. Yeah, you are invisible. You are like <laughs> uh, I have a new secret power. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I make it like this? Uh, 
I'll, I'll make you a, a co-host. Let's see if you can oh. move yourself. Wow. Okay. Can you can you move? Okay. Do you see the breakout I, rooms? I uh, do not. That's right. Are you guys directly on Zoom? Or are you going through the Hoover site? Uh, directly on Zoom. Oh, that's probably the problem here. Oh, I'm okay. on the Hoover site. Ah, okay. So how do I go to Zoom? Uh, where's the link? I'll send you the link. Okay, okay maybe take me off co-host, huh? All right. <laughs> Meeting ended. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no nerve. I'm so nervous. I'll mess something up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the direct link should be in chat, right? Sorry, I really don't know how to use any of this. Yeah, yeah. The link is in the chat. You can just- Oh, click. I see it now. Okay, yeah. let me yeah. figure this out. Please join. So why are there two of you? Launch meeting. Later. One is, <laughs> I'm on, on a big camera and the other one is uh, my laptop. I'm just- uh, really becoming aware of if there is some interruption, if there is some hackers and so on. <laughs> uh, for a while I was trying to figure out how you could talk when you were muted, then I just figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get my email, Veda? Yes, yes, I've received just now. I haven't been able to respond, but yeah. I'll, I'll respond after this session. So what, what did you do about yesterday's thing? You know, the, uh, the hacker. Yesterday, we managed to solve it. You know, we just muted everyone. And then uh, finally. I actually, I actually banned and couldn't get back in. Oh, I see you. Oh. Yeah. I think by the, uh, time you, by the time you were back, the conference was over, I guess. Uh, Angela? You no, can try I, muting I yourself. I immediately tried to come back in, and it just said you've been you've been removed by you can't come back in, and that I did that. And then I said, well, maybe by the by Oban thing, you know, maybe a smart move there. And then there was nobody there, so I said, okay, and I gave up on it after a while. Ah, sorry, Jay. Sorry about throwing you out of the conference. <laughs> uh, uh, Angela, can you hear me? You're still music. Yes, I'm. I'm now in Zoom. Yeah. 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 Yes. So actually, it's about time to uh, start. Come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. But we we should have time for another session. So it's just okay. let's have a quick uh, summary of what people talked about, and then mm. re-divide ourselves. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Now I see you on the list. <laughs> Great. All right. I'll just go see what's the situation in the groups. I can I move you. I can move you to the number. What, what, which number was it? Three, number three. Okay, I can move you there. Let's see. Thank you. <clears throat> I can move myself to another room. Where am I? <laughs> Uh, how can I move myself? Uh, oh, yeah, there. All right, see you soon. Hi, Michael, how are you? Marco has left us alone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, yes. Can you see me as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I somehow missed out on this procedure some way. <laughs> shall, shall I move into a breakout room now? It's up to you. It's up to you. You can be here with us. Yeah, but, what? Sorry? You can yeah, be with us can... here. It's up to you. I mean, nothing. Sorry, say it. 
nothing nothing fun is going on here you you can decide <laughs> <laughs> so i will get to back to your request i had a full day today i will get to, back to your request today concerning the talk can you can you uh, push me into uh, breakout room number two uh I, I don't think i'll be able to do that uh, but marco when he comes back he will be able to push you to some room okay because he's the host now yeah uh, i'm just the co-host I'm, I'm, i'm doing this all this with my mobile phone so it's it's a bit limited in the production yeah. Yeah. so Ma marco yeah. is here marco is here i think marco? <clears throat> Okay, he's not yet here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but everything seems to run rather smoothly, right? Until now, so far so good. Yesterday we had a few issues, but uh, finally we were able to restore. We had some yeah, what... bunch of bunch of boys and girls uh, disturbing us. Uh, they made yeah. uh, nasty comments on the speaker and so on. <laughs> so but, I listened to Crystal's talk, but. I didn't didn't notice uh, any any kids uh, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Finally, now I think more or less we are quite secure. But uh, you never know. We have to be very cautious <laughs> and alert. So I'm just sitting okay. in front of my computer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, but uh... <laughs> Veda, you must be very tired, no? It's okay. Um, I mean, once in a while, getting tired is better. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing such a great job I, yeah. uh, i've been attending this whole thing now for a few days since it started and i'm really uh, amazed about everything so so great I, i've i've got a lot of friends here and those who are helping me all the time you know yeah so, thank you Vedas friends yeah they say welcome <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Marco, your microphone is off. All right. So I gave them one more minute. Uh, so no. <laughs> uh, did you have a good discussion? Room number one. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, just taking time. Um, I think we have time enough for another round, so everyone has a chance to join another topic. Okay. Hey, Marco, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, hi. It's oh, Michael. Hi. hi. So can you can you push me into room number breakout room number two, please? It was just uh, had a little bit of a delay here. Yeah. Uh, right now or uh, for the second meeting? Yeah, better, better for the second uh, yeah. Uh, term. Yeah. Okay. You can, Great. You can add, add uh, number two in your name, so I can just quickly browse all the all the names and. Divide people. Okay, so I'll do that. Yeah. All right, I'll close the rooms. So now I added uh, uh, the number two to my name. Yeah. <clears throat> or maybe I should add it in front of it. Mm -hmm. Makes even more sense to. That's called empirical learning, Michael. Yeah, that's totally cool. <laughs> I like it. Wonderful. I managed. So Marco, you control our time. Yeah. I have this kind of power. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> and we you throw us in the air from place to place and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bless you mark i lost the link to room number one and i had to come out what do i do now sorry <clears throat> I, I lost the link to room number one i was there yeah and i got disconnected uh, no problem. Everyone is disconnected because I, I closed all the rooms. Oh, okay. So everyone should be here now. 
right. Marco, I must say that the session was really good. And it was a great learning because of the interaction and understanding different perspective. So uh, I was in room number three and something like three different options do came up how to handle home and education. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So let's take uh, room number one first, the global issues. Uh, you want to do a quick summary? Yes, this is Thomas uh, Sudbury. Uh, I was a former teacher there. I mean, not teacher at all, staff person. So um, I'm so impressed, Marco, by your demonstration of how the real online collaboration can work so easily ad hoc as we're doing here. So well done. And uh, so we there's plenty written in our Google document. So I'm, I'm sure that you're going to have this be available later for people to read through that and see. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not sure how to present this. Should I just read through what's already written there or? Okay, uh, so. Yeah, if, yeah, if you can summarize somehow, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, education in the developing nation needs a shift to fit in the global market. Um, greater self-confidence for young citizens to choose how to interact with others for global issues and to uh, not bring fear themselves as they're trying to think about what they can do. Um, kids need to feel attached to the global issues. Democratic education actually brings the agency to the kids so that they can change the world. Um, and then the next idea is to move from knowledge about approach education to uh, finding their own questions, do research, take action. New experience brings new insights and knowledge, develops agency, empathy, and perspective taking. Next one is E-learning and digital technologies to enhance education is one way of exposing learners to the global space. Developing nations like mine are beginning to embrace this. Last one is democratic education as a way of changing the way we and future adults will understand economical structures and therefore have an impact on climate change if we see a connection between climate change and economic systems. So that's everything been added there. Um, and I, I just want to take a second here and just cheerlead for uh, democratic education and Sudbury model, which is my insights into it and how powerful that is in a spiritual way of just learning to be who you choose to be in each moment without having to learn the obedience that the mass oriented school seems to be designed to do. So uh, thank you all for being here. What a joy. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Then the room number of the group number two, uh, the one humanity. Did you have time to decide who's going to do a quick summary? If can someone else of the group, because I'm not so good in the in this thing. <laughs> I can read what we have on our notes. All right, cool. Um, so we were just, uh, we had collaboration and racism, um, that democratic and multi-age diverse groups can advance collaboration. Um, resolution is better with multiple religions and ethnic groups represented. Uh, racism in different uh, exists in various parts of the world in different ways that it affects the education system and the democratic education that we are trying to flourish um, and to, to peer networks can bring collaboration through groups and networks. And then we were discussing democratic education and um, there was the question of whether it has to exist in a traditional Monday through Friday school setting um, uh, from the perspective that schools provide a childcare function, parents can work. Uh, it is good to have certain fixed times, but depending on legal situations um, and stuff that, you know, so that's something for discussion. Uh, sorry, our notes are a little. Um, uh, schools need, we, we were in the subject of schools needing to strive to be more diverse and inclusive. Um, so questions of how can we be more inclusive? How can we create a 
where everyone feels they belong and um, and what about in areas where you know there's some very serious um, segregation of people due to the many class systems and things uh, and uh, economic uh, statuses that exist around the world so how to attract a, a truly diverse population and what that means in democratic um, education um, and another idea we had was to have an intern from abroad where each month the children would be able to act with someone from a different country to understand that country's culture. So, you know, really just thinking about ways that um, we network uh, in order to um, start thinking in terms of us as being one humanity and how we address education. That's it. Well, that's a lot. Need 15 minutes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right, uh, group number three, home and education. Someone to Did anybody up. summarize? Uh, maybe Derry. Derry is, uh, gave us a good idea. Uh, the problem was that we came to a conclusion. That I don't think anybody wrote. I didn't write anything. I'm, I'm not. I forgot about it. But uh, uh, a lady, I forgot her name. She brought up an issue that uh, she's they have a school and the problem are actually with the parents and uh, they had a suggestion maybe you can bring it up Derry, you can say you said yeah so what i I'm suggest i'm is, sorry yeah i got you yeah what i suggest is uh, one thing uh, quarterly having a parents meet and really uh, create some awareness program or they can also update their knowledge about the, what is happening around the world. So they could be the, you know, oneness with the teacher and the parents. So that I have suggested. Barry, you also can give yes. input. Um, well, my feeling yeah. is that we've got very creative um, learners in our young children and we have a workplace that says it wants autonomy, self-directed, uh, innovative people, etc, etc. And somehow school gets in the way. The, the natural learning potential of little kids is wiped out by school. So when they come out of the other end of it, they're not even what the workplace wants, even though schools say they're preparing young people for the workplace. So we've really got to change school. And it, the, the undeveloped ideas of parents, I won't call them uneducated parents, they can be very, very educated parents, but they don't understand the need for school to change. So parents seem to be the block on changing schools in many ways. Um, so we need to, I don't know, what do you say? Educate, inform, change the mindset of parents in order to allow schools to change. Yeah. I just want to say one thing that I said earlier, which I think is very important. I feel it very strongly. Uh, I don't like then people say about the parents that are uneducated. The parents said different. We want the children to study from experience. And then when the parents studied at home and from experience, they said they're uneducated. I'm also uneducated maybe uh, because you know, my dream is the children will study from life. And uh, if you say the parents studied from life and then you call them uneducated, they are different education. Today, the world has changed and maybe there is a gap. We need to see how to close the gap between what is going on and what went 50 years ago, or whenever, I don't know how long ago, it depends on the age of the parents. So when he grew up, things were different. Father was a farmer, child was a farmer with the father, he learned anything. If you tell him to do the things that he knows, I'm sure he'll do it very well. Probably more than anybody else who finished professor. But I can see more problem with children, with pressure from parents in the so-called uh, educated parents, then the children that the children when according to the what i hear is uneducated 
So the I want to say I need to say something in Derry for Derry. I think what he meant by this is several years ago, employers wanted content knowledge, educated mastery of the subject uh, area. Today, employers have shifted in what they're looking for. And parents don't know that. The world thinks the employers still want deep knowledge of physics and what the cell looks like. And they did used to want that, but now business and executives have all, because of the fourth industrial revolution, say, no, we don't want that now. We're a knowledge-rich society. We want these things. That's what I believe. But she be session sawa does wagi ka sawa does un jo chu check karu chu. They are a sada no vijayami. Mama actively. By the way, ma'am, can you can you turn off your mic, please? I just want to say it's a, not exactly like this, because uh, if you look at Steve Jobs on Bill Gates, if today they would go to get a job in their own companies, they probably will not take them in, because today the what they are still looking are they are still looking for a lot of Howard graduates or all of this. In the in the near future, we will need to talk about relearning. So I'm dealing actually with in my not in the uh, in, in the Isha schools with relearning. So we think that people have to know how to learn and the job will change and they will have to change with the job. It's not that uh, the robot will take over, but the person will have to learn a new, a new, a new, new skills mm -hmm. as he goes along. And this is uh, if uh, students or any person need to learn how to learn alone and maybe faster. So he can keep on studying. Somebody who studied 10 years to be a doctor cannot be a doctor today. Nobody will trust him. So the same with any profession and this change is, is happening faster and faster because we employ machinery, we employ all kinds of modern technologies mm -hmm. that the worker needs to learn how to cope or he, he needs to move to another job. And again, he will need to learn. You see, uh, many years ago, a person I'm, I'm, took a job for all his life. I'm, can Today, you people yeah. change four or five times in their lifetime. So they yeah. need to all the time change. So yeah. learning how to learn is the most important, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, uh, I, will, I will end the discussion here. And we can continue the discussion in the breakout rooms. So now you can, again, uh, fix your number. Uh, number one for uh, global issues. Number two for one humanity. And number three, home and education. And preferably choose another number than last time. But if you absolutely want to have the same number, please do. I'm, which one are you going to? I want to continue this discussion. Um, number one. On. Okay, number I'll one. see you. Can you one. put me in one, uh, Marco, please? But they yeah. put me in the old room. It's not my room. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, you also put me in uh, the old room. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's it automatically. I will rearrange. <laughs> I've forgotten how to change my name. Ah, oh, right click, I remember. Then you get put out in the cold. Rename. Can you hear me? Yeah. If you don't move us, we will go back to our old rooms. It seems like First yeah. room. Yeah. I'm trying to re rearrange people. <laughs> Relearn. Move, move, move them. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
while we're all waiting, this is Thomas in Tucson with Sudbury. Uh, I just want to celebrate again what we're capable of doing thanks to where computers are at. And computers were just at the beginning of what computers are going to be capable of doing. I'm a longtime computer programmer, yeah. and it's just an ongoing celebration. We all have superpowers here. We can connect like this around the planet, yeah. right? It's amazing. Yeah, it, it is quite, quite amazing, yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not. Not always uh, like fluent, and uh, not everything is going going as planned. But <laughs> it's still amazing. <laughs> and I've learned to thank everybody for their their English. Right, that's just not celebrated enough. That everyone has the skills they have in a language that we can all share. Right, yeah. and uh, all languages are important. All dialects are important, and uh, it's. Uh, my my bride is a professor of linguistic Palestinian, so uh, I've learned just to really celebrate language a lot and often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big big thing, but it can't be oh, over. Originally, only four point eight percent of our planet people are uh, native English speakers. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you all learn English, yeah. and yeah. I feel uh, lucky to have a mother tongue of English because I don't know if I'd be able to learn it. Today we are programs that are AI based. You can learn in, uh, in 200 hours a language. If you want, I'll give you the link. <laughs> That's the problem, the wanting to. <laughs> if you want to learn a language in two hours, 200 hours, you learn a language, any language. Yeah, I should learn Arabic. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you ask Marco to connect and we'll give you the link. I've got his uh, website. Uh, no, it's already. not from him. It's from another place. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. And thanks to everybody. You're welcome. Hundreds thanks. of millions of people who don't speak English are not here. What? <laughs> Hundreds of millions of people who don't speak English. Yeah, most of the world. Are not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> That's why I said, if you either you have a there today, there are two options. Either you have a program that translates simultaneously. There are programs like this already, or you can learn in two hour, two hundred hours any language. So at least with the level of the discussion here, you can learn two, three thousand words easy. Also, we're really adding to world obesity. <laughs> Well, by not eating is it during the during the meeting. Uh, is every, has everyone uh, joined the breakout room that they wish to join? Not me, Marco. I'm waiting for three. Oh, right. I asked for one. I don't know if I'm in one. Uh, Thomas, uh, you should have the. I asked for three. Room number three. Uh, every everyone should have their invitations. I didn't get an invitation. Nor I. I've not received an invitation as well. I, wonder, I got an invitation for two and I canceled it, so maybe that's why I haven't got oh, one. Okay. I had for three and I canceled it because Same. I was in three earlier and I wanted to come to number one. I, I yeah. wrote number one near my name. Maybe not big enough. I don't know how to make it bigger. Yeah, it's 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 there. Uh, I just uh, you should be in the room number one. I'll, I'll move move you to the room number two. Uh, and uh, and try if you see the link there. This is Thomas again. There might be some bugs here, and clearly, Marco, computers can yeah. do better, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Thomas, I'll try also sending you to room, room number two. Can you see the link? Not yet. Nope. Um, so uh, let's. I give up quickly with computers, so I'm happy to just to stay here and uh, finish yeah. out the the session. Yeah. in whatever way makes sense to you. Yeah. There's only two people in the room number three at the moment. So if someone wants to join there. Can you can you put me back in three? Uh, I'm Angela. Two. Yeah. Where are you? So what room is this? The main room. Ah, this is the hall. <laughs> yeah. This is the best room because we're here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll try adding you to the room number three. I'll, I'll go there quickly because they're asking my help. I'll come back in a minute. Okay. Uh, I've put me to any room you like, Marco. Srinivas Kumar.
This is Thomas, just to fill the dead air here. I, I just want to celebrate the spiritual side of what democratic education does for bringing this celebration of this moment for what each person wants to do with their moment. That's a very spiritual thing when it's looked at in that way. And I want to say big thanks to all the uh, people making the technology side of this work. So uh, big thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Your video is off, Thomas. Uh, can... My my good computer here with two big screens is without a camera, so I apologize. But it might be for the best that nobody can see my crazy beard. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> that's okay. Doesn't matter. So Marco, uh, Marco is not here. We have to wait for him. Meanwhile, Thomas, you can say something about Sudbury because uh, we are quite keen to know about Sudbury and what you, what you did in Sudbury and so on. Well, I'll, I'll just top off the, start from the top of my head. Sudbury is a simulation in a self-regulated small society of the principles of adult society, right? So it's not a matter of teaching the young people how to do things. It's a matter of letting them empirically experience what freedom means. And then with that freedom, how we self-regulate on a societal level. I was with the Sudbury School. I had 20 uh, young people in it, right? And I was there in the afternoons for four months. In the mornings, I was with a, a regular school of 20 students, but on a traditional basis. So every day I got to experience the dichotomy of the old way and the new way. And it was just amazing to see the young citizens stepping into roles like on the Judicial Committee, which is a simulation of the legal process of adult society. And they could be prosecutors or judges or jury and they just learn and they would just get uh, big in those big spaces, big roles that they were allowed to participate in, in a way that's just not even going to be possible in a traditional school. And uh, there's so much more to share. I mean, the whole place was run on a rule book, which was adjusted every week according to who wanted to put agenda items on there. Just a, a real life demonstration of how adults have learned to interact and make choices together every day at Sudbury. Thank you. Marco is here now. Marco? I think he's gone again. Could, could you share some of your uh, experience a new approach, Thomas, a couple of experiences. Well, one time I remember it's just this, this uh, maybe uh, 12 years old, a young gentleman, I'll say, and uh, he'd been kicked out of a number of traditional schools because he just was not sufficiently obedient. He was a rebel, right? But he, he found his place in the Sudbury School, was on his feet. Nobody was telling him what to do here or there. There's nothing to rebel against, actually. And as in the few months I was there, I could see him. Like, we're all used to the physical growth spurts that young people go through. I was able to see him go through emotional growth spurts, right? And to be very adult in his interactions and his, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking of uh, the judicial process where we, Sudbury is able to deal with violations of the rule book that everyone contributes to, right? It's not to keep this, the, the system working well as much as to help the young people understand what has proven to be reliable and how societies can self-regulate. So this young guy just kind of got big and when it was an appropriate time to be more mature, he was able to do it. And I could see that progress through the months I was there. Does that make sense? Wonderful, wonderful, amazing. Of course. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. And uh, I um, would like to connect. I would like to connect with you. I, I made a request to you privately. I see there your message there. I'll I'll happy to do that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Thomas. This summer, we held an online democratic schools day for 300 kids for all over We, we my daughter was one of them and uh, you can't hear me now okay. it's okay now good yeah okay good. uh could you could you hear what i just said no sorry we just missed few sentences i think was this summer we held an online democratic schools day which was called the odds day for children all over the world and we had like 300 kids these kids who some of them who do in a for chat this is thomas you broke up again there is a control to reduce your bandwidth on your video it might help your internet if that's where the problem's coming from, but we were again not able to hear you. I've learned also that sometimes talking slower allows the bits to uh, break apart and come back together again across the internet. I, I'm afraid I talk too fast and it just overwhelms the internet capability. Uh, Marco, you there? Yes, I'm here. We've got another uh, seven, eight minutes. Uh, we, we have another conference coming up. Yep, uh, I'm just uh, closing the breakout rooms so we can have a quick summary and and this meeting. Yeah, sure. The next, next one starts right away. Does the next one start right away? Um, yes, at, uh, in about uh, seven minutes, it's going to start. Okay. So everyone should be here. Breakout rooms closed. No, four seconds more. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody should be trying here. All right, so uh, we, we had a schedule check uh, and we are a bit behind, behind time or schedule. Uh, and the next one will start in seven or six minutes. So uh, we don't have a proper time for summary uh, but I, I would like to have a few words from each group. Actually, just two groups because number three didn't really work out this time. So number one, the global issues group. Can you give some summary of what happened there? Uh, yeah, certainly, I would like to say it is about, we all together were six or seven participants in group one, and we talked about the value of the democracy. So the students, they have to understand what democracy is and then how they have to be participated in the different activities so that uh, students should have to understand uh, about who they are and what they want to do for their career. Uh, so that whatever they want to be in the future, that is to be planned and there should be some practices so that he or she can get success in the future. It is almost about group one. Perfect. Uh, and uh, um, one humanity group. Did you come up with something? Uh, real quick, uh, we were discussing about the different values between global and local, and also how the concept of one humanity means that we are in, all in this together and as well how democratic education can help to understand diversity maybe on a different way than mainstream systems. And mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else from the group would like to add something because I didn't have time to write everything, so. <laughs> yeah, all right, perfect. Then we have uh, time for three or four people to quickly say what, uh, if this brought some ideas or if you already have some ideas which you are going to uh, 
bring forth or work on uh, to how to create democratic education more mainstream. Purtak? Uh, yes, thank you. I was just talking, but obviously the internet couldn't keep up with me. So what I was saying was this summer, we held an odds day, online democratic school day, because for example, I live in Turkey and uh, because there's compulsory education, there's no way to open up a democratic school in the true sense. So what we did was we created a day, online day, uh, so that the kids that go to traditional schools could experience what it feels like to be a student in democratic schools. My daughter being one of them, it was very interesting. I would like to tell you one thing, she was in the parliaments. Uh, I mean, it all, the day was actually uh, created by the young ones, by, the, by these kids. And my daughter, she doesn't know what it means her voice to have a meaning. So I saw her in these meetings, uh, parliament meetings, she went ev with everything that was being, she went ahead and said, let's vote. <laughs> because never once in her life is she voted at school. I mean, she is voted, but nobody cares about the result. So it was very, very interesting, very important that she saw that she had the power not that she could do a lot because she is very used to being told what to do in an education sense, just like Marco? the group discussions in group two and three. She needs to be told what, what, what to be done. So it was very interesting. Perhaps uh, a, a way of bringing democratic education to the world could be these online democratic school days. Perfect. Yes. Marco, Marco. Uh, I, I think we have to finish because we have to prepare uh, for the next talk. Uh, like it takes about one or two minutes. Yeah. Uh, but but we have a lot of opportunity because in Wuva you can directly create different groups and immediately you know uh, continue the conversation there. All the participants really enjoyed your talk and uh, your session. I think they were getting into the mood, but <laughs> because we had very less time for this session, so I think we can carry this one over to Wuva and. Uh, Continue with the session, you know. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow again we can you can schedule or you know do something like that. I think yeah. I think it would be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and hope you see another meeting. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you very much, and hope to see you in Nepal in our organization here for IDEC 2022, if not before. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> we'll catch up again. Yeah. Marco. Marco. Thank you. Marco, Marco, you have to make Marco, us the host. Before Marco, you have to make us the host, okay? Yes. Ah, right. So the next talk is by uh, Mark Vela. He's a nomadic pianist, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be also very, very interesting. So those of you who would like to join, please be there with us. It, it, it's it's it going be, to be in French language, though. Yes, it will be. It will be in English. The the second of November, I think. Second of November, he is going to deliver another keynote I think in English. It, it will be in English. The second of November with him. Okay. Now at this time, it will be in French. And today, do we have that session in uh, translated in English or just that in French? Today, it's only in English. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. only in French. Only. All in right. French. But, but please do visit all the workshops on our website because there are a lot of workshops people have created and uh, it would be nice to join them. And I think they also have a lot of things to offer there. Yeah, you know? of course. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. See you soon. See you in a few minutes. Those of you who are going to join. Okay. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Love you. Thank you.